From January 2019 to March 2020, the red supergiant star Betelgeuse, the 10th brightest star in the sky, and depending on your opinion of Antares, the largest in our galaxy with an actual name, underwent a period of protracted dimming, decreasing in brightness by 60%, a change unprecedented in nearly 200 years of close observation. This, given the star's short lifespan and advanced age, immediately triggered speculation that it was about to die in a supernova explosion. Such an event, if it occurred, would be unique in human history. The first ever observed death of a known star. The last death of a star previously visible to our eyes is believed to have occurred roughly 300,000 years ago, when our species was only just born. Betelgeuse's death will be spectacular. During its three months of peak brightness, it will outshine a quarter moon, cast shadows, and be visible during daylight. It will remain so for a year, and in the night sky for several years more, before finally fading to nothing, forever marring our most beautiful constellation. We are in no danger, of course. While Betelgeuse's seething surface makes determining its distance difficult, it is believed to be at least four times the minimum safe distance from Earth for a supernova of its type. But that frisson of danger, not to mention the aforementioned light show, led a substantial portion of the world's population to quietly wish death on one of our sky's most precious jewels. The reason for Betelgeuse's fainting spell, what astronomers are already calling the Great Dimming, capitalized, is not known with complete certainty. The consensus, supported by UV observations by the Hubble Space Telescope, appears to be settling on a dust cloud emitted during an eruption from the star's surface, an eruption nearly half a trillion times stronger than those produced by our own sun. A more exotic hypothesis is that the dimming may have been caused by gravity darkening, the reduction of light from a star due to lower surface gravity caused by bulging at the surface. As I mentioned in my video on Vega and Altair, Gravity darkening is normally caused by a star's rapid rotation, but Betelgeuse is not rotating quickly enough to trigger gravity darkening, meaning the bulge must have been caused by something external, yet invisible, like a black hole. I'm always wary of black holes as solutions to cosmic mysteries, as the near invisibility makes them hard to falsify, but it's still a fascinating idea. In 2020, a team led by Meredith Joyce of the Australian National University conducted a series of simulations suggesting that Betelgeuse was still in the core helium burning phase of red gianthood, a relatively early phase which meant that we have about a million years before it explodes. It seemed Betelgeuse's panic attack had finally been laid to rest. And then, in April 2023, Betelgeuse sucker punched us again. It began to brighten, not simply returning to normal, but eventually to 50% above its average luminosity. Andrea Dupree of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics has suggested that the two events may be connected, that Betelgeuse's current brightness may be an after-effect of the same event that triggered its dimming. The surface eruption that produced the dust cloud expelled a plume of matter equivalent to the mass of Mars, enough to seriously disrupt the ebb and flow of the star's photosphere. The brightening may thus be analogous to the rush of water following an undersea explosion. On the 1st of June, a team led by Hideyuki Sayo of Tohoku University in Japan employed models of stellar evolution to conclude that Betelgeuse's longest period variability of 2,200 days represents the star's physical pulsation. This would mean that Betelgeuse is far larger than models previously believed up to 1,400 times the diameter of the Sun. Also, according to their models, the great dimming was caused by an internal pulsation rather than an external factor like a dust cloud. Their models showed that such a periodicity meant that far from being merely at the beginning of its million-year phase of burning helium into carbon, Betelgeuse is already nearing the point at which its last dregs of carbon were being fused into neon, sodium, or oxygen a process that takes only a thousand years. With the carbon gone, its products will then fuse into silicon, and then the silicon into iron, processes that in total 
thanks to the ever-decreasing availability of each fused element, could last, in the words of the authors, only, quote, a few tens of years. Unlike other elements, iron consumes energy when fused, rather than producing it. And so, once a star reaches the point at which iron is its only available fuel, it loses the energy needed to keep itself from collapsing into its core, and explodes into a supernova. If the team is right that Betelgeuse is nearing the end of its thousand-year carbon-burning phase, the possibility that its lifetime might end within our own becomes very real. Needless to say, Meredith Joyce was quick to respond. On the 7th of June, she and her team published a preprint in the research notes of the American Astronomical Society, noting that observations by multiple scientists had shown that Betelgeuse's angular diameter cannot be larger than 45 milliarc seconds, which would correspond to a diameter 1,100 times that of the Sun, and likely lower. If the great dimming was an intrinsic pulsation, rather than an extrinsic effect, then it would be far more regular and likely would have been seen at some point in the past. Also, Sayo's model had not accounted for Betelgeuse's tenuous, extended atmosphere. I think what this fracas proves more than anything is that determining the internal dynamics of a star 600 light-years away when we still don't fully understand those within our own star is a tricky business. On the whole, I prefer to side with Meredith and the other supernova pessimists, both because doing so agrees with the cosmological principle, that it is generally a good idea to assume that you are not in a privileged position, either in space or time, and because unlike nearly every other space nerd on the planet, I don't want Betelgeuse to explode. Excitement over the possibility of an unprecedented celestial display does not prepare us for what happens afterwards, when our sky is left bereft of one of its most beautiful stars.